As fall sets in, one spirit becomes stronger and stronger as the nights grow longer and colder. Sam Hain, the spirit of Halloween, finally manifests around October 28th and fades for another year on November 2nd. You're listening to Ghostly Activities. I'm your guide, Jacob Rice, and this is Sam Hain, the spirit of Halloween. Sam Hain's Origin Sam Hain came to the United States with British and Irish immigrants. Originally, it was known as Samhain, a pagan holiday for the last harvest of the year. It brought the darkest time of the year also, so the Celts celebrated one last time before winter set in. As times changed, people and their legends changed too. The holiday became embodied in the form of a human-like figure, and that figure is the Sam Hain we know today. And as Halloween grew in popularity, Sam Hain began to manifest more often and became a powerful spirit. It's spirits we created with our own wishes, hopes, and fears, much like a tulpa. Manifestation When Sam manifests, a few things happen in town. First, a dead pumpkin patch or cornfield may come back to life. Second, animals may become more active, scurrying around and causing mischief. Third, trees that lost their leaves may grow back with fiery red and pumpkin orange leaves to herald its arrival. Next, you'll start to see figures lurking around the edges of town or in fields nearby. That figure won't be defined. You may see lanky shadows or a pot-bellied kid with a bigger head than normal. You see, Sam can manifest in different ways, but they always reflect the Halloween traditions in town. And that means it could look like a scarecrow, a walking jack-o'-lantern, or something else that symbolizes your town's version of the Halloween spirit. This figure will take on its final form the night before Halloween, but you can see it between October 28th and November 2nd. Give or take a day or two. Sam Hain's Supernatural Abilities Sam has many different supernatural powers. Most deal with its ability to appear, disappear, reward people, or curse people. But Sam does have other powers you may be surprised to see, and these include the ability to heal hurt children or animals, shapeshift into different animals, monsters, or even people, but it's not a good thing when Sam becomes human. Nope. Regenerate plants of the season like pumpkins and corn. Create fire to light the way for lost trick-or-treaters. Intensify darkness so flashlights won't work. Ward home so evil can't enter them. Cast illusions to trick people or make bad people see their worst fears. Erase memories, because not everyone should remember an encounter with Sam Hain. Teleport using shadows to enter or exit places. Break spells, hexes, and enchantments placed on good people. How to show the spirit of Halloween. If you want to stay on the good side of Sam Hain, you simply need to show a little effort. And that means decorating or having a party. Remember, Sam Hain was a celebration and feast, and a little effort goes a long way for Sam. It loves the following things. Jack-o'-lanterns, scarecrows, decorated yards and houses with monsters and ghosts, candy left out, costumes, the scarier the better, and Halloween parties. The Halloween Curse there's always someone that says something bad about Halloween. Sam takes note of that, but it doesn't place the curse on all naysayers. It's selective. If you object because of your religion, Sam Hain doesn't tend to lay a curse on you. But, if you still have some resentment around Halloween, Sam may visit you. You see, the specific curse isn't really a curse. It's a visit by Sam Hain, and it will be angry. In most cases, it will scare the spirit of Halloween back into you. Unless you've done something horrible on Halloween, then it might do something even more drastic. If you've done any of these things, Sam Hain is likely to visit you. Murder a person or animal. Physically hurt someone or an animal. Bully a little kid while trick-or-treating. 
burn a home down, steal a child's candy, curse Halloween itself, smash jack-o'-lanterns, the symbol of Halloween, play tricks on trick-or-treaters when you don't have something to give them, what to do if you meet Sam Hain. If you live the Halloween spirit, don't worry. Sam will leave you alone. It may even help you get more treats or make your tricks more sensational. Sam Hain always finds a way to reward folks who revel in the holiday. This is what you can expect if you love Halloween like I do. Bags full of your favorite candy. More fun and good people showing up to your Halloween party. Any magic tricks seem lifelike. Anything you cook will be the most amazing thing anyone's ever eaten. Your decorations seem to come alive. You won't get caught if you pull a trick on a Halloween naysayer. And if you practice magic, your spells are extra potent. The Naysayers and Sam Hain. But the naysayers may have something to worry about. Sam doesn't like it if you badmouth the holiday. It may seek out some nastier than normal tricks. In the worst cases, it kills the naysayer. Okay, but you had to do something really horrible on this Halloween season or in previous Halloween seasons. When Sam kills someone, it looks like a Halloween prank gone wrong. A bag of burning dog poop could turn into a landmine. When you step on it, it blows you and your house up. In other cases, people mysteriously choke on candy corn or maybe there's a razor in your candy bar. It's different for each person. As for the tricks, they're not so evil. Bullies get lost on their way home and cry so hard, they attract the police to take them home. In other cases, a stolen candy disappears. For meaner people, something may come out of the pumpkin patch or cornfields and haunt them for a night or two. The torment stops around November 2nd when Sam has to sleep for another year. Still, some scary things may linger through November, but they'll fade away. Stick around, and I've got a little tale about jack-o'-lanterns to tell you. And here's the bonus story, Stingy Jack and the Origin of Jack-o'-lanterns. Irish folklore says Stingy Jack tricked the devil and became an evil spirit. The Irish made protective decorations to keep Stingy Jack away, and when they migrated to North America, the Irish needed to adapt their lanterns. Stingy Jack was a cheapskate in Ireland. He was the cheapest of the cheapest. His clothes were a patchwork of scraps and shoes resold more times than a semi-truck's wheels. He hoarded his money and became skilled in the art of the swindle. That ability, though, let him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the master of lies himself, the devil. Not many people can fool the devil, but Jack did it twice. The first time, Jack had stolen a pile of goods from a nearby village. As the villagers chased Jack, he ran into the devil. Satan told Jack it was his time to die, but a crazy idea popped into Jack's head. He made a deal with the devil, turn into a coin, and Jack will pay off the villagers. When they fight over the coin, you can harvest their souls. So, the devil became a coin, and Jack put it in his wallet, next to a cross. It blocked the devil's power, and he was trapped for a year. Next, Stingy Jack released the devil if he let Jack alone for a year. But Jack went up a tree and carved a cross in it. That stopped the devil from coming down. Jack made another deal that the devil had to leave him alone for 10 years. Plus, the devil couldn't reap Jack's soul. The devil agreed, and Jack was free to go. A few days later, Jack died. God wouldn't let him into heaven because, well, Jack wasn't a very good guy. The devil kept his word, though, and barred Jack from hell. And that left Jack's soul with no place to go. So he was left in purgatory, somewhere between heaven and the living, to haunt the bogs and villages. Some say the devil admired Jack's trickery and he gave Jack a piece of coal or candle to find his way through the night. You can see that light flickering over bogs to this very day. People call them Will-o'-the-Wisp, but it might be Stingy Jack trudging along. 
As Stingy Jack haunted the bogs and villages of Ireland, the locals needed to find something to keep him away. They carved his likeness into root vegetables, like turnips, parsnips, and potatoes, very common plants in the area. But they were hard to carve, and there was little chance of putting a candle in one. Both were requirements to keep away Stingy Jack and his cabal of evil spirits. The Irish kept at it, and, over the years, they developed stunning craftsmanship. Things changed when the Irish migrated to North America during the 1830s. They needed to adapt their jack-o'-lanterns due to the new flora. And luckily, the ideal plant grew all over the place. When the Irish came to North America, they found a dearth of root vegetables. And that means no turnips, no parsnips, nor potatoes for carving. How could they carve the protective faces to keep away Stingy Jack and the other evil spirits? Pumpkins. A native gourd species to North America fit the bill. They were also much larger and easier to carve than turnips and parsnips. A candle could also fit easily inside the hollowed gourd. The Irish spread this new tactic to their family and friends, and it spread across the U.S. and Canada in subsequent years. And that, my friends is how we got our jack-o'-lanterns to keep the bad spirits of Halloween at bay. Thank you for listening to Ghostly Activities. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share it, like it, tell your friends and family about it, and go forth. <laughs> I'll see you again in a short while with a new ghostly tale to tell. Take care.